Uttaran, Thornishta, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. good morning. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Bon dia. Jumbo. Cheergive. <laughs> That's the Irish. <laughs> it's wonderful to welcome you here. Uh, this conference started as a dream, and that was about two and a half years ago, and now it has become a reality. And as you've heard, it is the work of a great partnership with the Irish government, and in particular with Irish Aid, but also with the World Food Programme and the Climate Change Agriculture and Food Security Programme of SIGIAR. And I must also warmly thank the International Institute for Environment and Development, IIED, for helping us and helping many of you to prepare for and deliver to this conference, and to the Children's Investment Fund Foundation, SIF, and for making such broad and inclusive participation possible. On Saturday morning, I joined with a number of you as you arrived to meet and greet you, and I was so taken by the way in which you were linking with each other, wanting to share your case studies, wanting to hear what people from very different parts of the world, from the Arctic, from Mongolia, from various parts of Africa, Latin America, and Asia. It was just so exciting. I hope our conference is as exciting as your workshop was over the weekend, because we really want, as you've heard, to listen uh, to you. From the start, we wanted this conference to be different. We've planned it, as you've heard, as a listening conference, where the emphasis is on hearing the experiences of those who grapple with the linked challenges of hunger, undernutrition, and climate change on a daily basis, on small farms, in pastoralist communities, on small islands, and in cities and towns around the world. We're not here to tell people what to do. We're here to learn about what needs to be done and how. Now, I admit that listening doesn't always come naturally to policymakers and political figures. So I'm challenging all of us that fall into that category to really take this opportunity to listen to the voices gathered here in Dublin. It's rare to have so many diverse experiences under one roof, and we must make the most of this opportunity through a respectful and inclusive dialogue. Let's be honest and admit, as we've heard, that we haven't made the progress we desire on tackling hunger, nutrition, and climate change. The shocking statistics on hunger and undernutrition highlighted by the Uxoran and Thornishta this morning are an affront to us all. It makes no sense, morally, economically, or developmentally, that children are undernourished and unable to reach their full potential. But it's also an injustice passed from one generation to the next as we fail to address the root causes and fail to solve the problem. If we continue to address hunger, nutrition, and climate change as separate issues, we won't solve any one, much less all three of the challenges. People are hungry and undernourished for many reasons, including lack of access to resources, the absence of rights, conflict, natural disasters, and now climate change. Climate change is the last straw for many, caused by people living lives vastly different to theirs and enjoying a quality of life they can barely imagine. It is indiscriminate in its impacts, hurting those who have contributed least to the problem the most. It's clear to me when I visit families and communities living with the daily reality of poverty that they see no divisions between climate change, nutrition, food security, and the broader issues of human development, such as the protection of rights, access to decision-making, and accountability. All of these issues are linked, closely related, part of the reason why people are poor, powerless, in ill health, or hungry. Our challenge is to understand these linkages in the same way as those experiencing them do, and to design responses that solve the closely related problems. That's what this conference gives us an opportunity to do. I hope that through our discussions, we can extract some wisdom and powerful messages to help shape the way we do development in the future. As you've heard, our meeting is timely, given that we have a window between now and 2015 to design a new international development agenda. This matters because commitments made at the international level in turn inform national and local policies. And today we turn the tables to look from the grassroots up rather than from the top down. My colleagues and I in the Mary Robinson Foundation Climate Justice are working to inform the post-2015 development agenda through climate justice. 
an approach which links human rights, climate change, and development to achieve a people-centered response. A focus on people may sound obvious, but it can be transformational, putting as it does the voices and experiences of individuals rather than institutions center stage. With an ever-growing number of supporters for this approach, we can have the courage to face up to why we have not yet solved poverty, hunger, undernutrition, and climate change. Together, we can work to tackle inequality, uphold human rights, achieve gender equality, empower women, and maximize participation, accountability, and transparency in all aspects of development. Climate justice is also about giving voice to those most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. For this reason, as we've, all, as we've all been emphasizing, the most important people at this conference are the 100 plus grassroots practitioners who will share their stories, their experience and their analysis of what works and doesn't work on the ground. This is priceless information for policymakers grappling with the difficult task of shaping a whole new international development agenda. So the incentive to listen is really great. We have to listen up. Usually in speeches, I like to include a story that I've come across, a voice that's spoken to me about their reality. I'm thrilled that I don't have to do that in my message to you today. Instead, those of you gathered here will speak for yourselves on an international stage and you will be heard. You're here because we need the benefit of your wisdom and because we cannot tolerate the continuing reality of hungry families, undernourished children, and the added injustice of the impacts of climate change. We speak a lot in the worlds of human rights and development of helping people to help themselves. Every person wants to care for their own family. It's part of our nature. We have to respect this, this and create the conditions whereby everyone is afforded the opportunity to do so. By listening carefully over the next two days, we learn how to do this better. The truth is that we're talking about how to make a viable world in 2050. My four small grandchildren will be in their 40s in 2050 and will share the world with nine billion others. How will they all look back on this vital period when it will be clear to them that we had the opportunity to take the right course by the end of 2015. How will we be judged, not in the long term, but in 37 years? Will we stand accused of shirking our responsibility, or will we grasp the opportunity to set a new and viable course for humanity? Let's work really hard over the next two days to clarify and refine the messages we want to see in the post-2015 development agenda. Let's amplify the voices of those who need to be heard in order to tackle effectively hunger and nutrition in our climate-charged world. I know we can do it together. Thank you very much.